Welcome back to this series looking at time and hyperlapse photography. So far, we've talked about theory, camera settings for cameras, photo and cinema cameras, and some hardware that you can use to make your time lapses into hyperlapses. But to wrap up this series, I want to take a look at some software that you can use to process your time and hyperlapse work into an actual movie. Now to start off with in this video, we're going to take a look at how to use the open source video processing tool FFmpeg. Now you might be asking why FFmpeg? And this is likely doubly true when you see how it's used or how you go about using it. And I have to be honest, um, there are certainly tools out there that are easier to use. However, FFmpeg is so useful if you do any kind of work with video beyond what I'm covering just in this video that I find it to be almost an indispensable tool for me in processing and managing my video. It's something that almost every file that I produce in the process of either going to YouTube or just in being processed ends up getting run through one way or another. And I know that's kind of outside of the purview of time and hyperlapse, but I think it is at least worth having a cursory understanding of how it works, what it does, how to use it. And this is as good a place as any to talk about that. Plus, if you're shooting hyperlapse or time lapse footage in series of stills and you don't have software that can combine it, well, it's free. Now, all that said, if this sounds like something that's way over your head, I get it you know, that's fine. This isn't the only way you can go about converting your time-lapse photo sequences into video. And in the next video, we'll actually be looking at how to do the same things or similar things in DaVinci Resolve, uh, which is obviously a graphical interface, usable program. And of course, there is a free version available of that. Originally, I had intended to include in this video the installation of FFmpeg and some basic overview of how the command structure worked. However, in putting all of that together, I realized that that made this video far longer than I really wanted it to be for what it amounts to. So with that in mind, I have separated that out into a second video. Now, if you're new to FFmpeg or you've never installed it or haven't got it installed on your computer, then I would strongly recommend going and checking that video out. There is a link in the description and a card and all of that stuff before you continue on with this video. Now, if that doesn't sound all that interesting to you, well, you can follow along with the rest of the tutorial in this video. The commands are self-contained. Uh, they don't depend on anything like that. And you just won't have the how-to guide on installing FFmpeg or the overall command structure. So with that said, let's get on with the show. Of course, the main objective here is to convert a series of still images into a time-lapse video of some sort. That's what we were starting at, and that's what we want to be able to do. Now, the prerequisite here is you do need to have your images in sequential order in a folder somewhere that you can access. Now, you can use the image numbers that it came right out of your camera as long as they don't wrap around, so that they do need to go in sequential order from lowest to highest and are in a compatible format, namely JPEG or HEIF. If they're RAWs, you're going to have to do whatever you need to do to process that into JPEGs before you try to make them into a video. Now for this dem demo, I have a time-lapse sequence that's in a folder and they're already numbered with a six digit number starting with five zeros dot or and a one dot JPEG. Now, the second thing we need to know is the frame rate we want to output to. So 24, 50, 60, you know, that kind of thing. Though, take note, if you are targeting NTSC frame rates, so 24 frames per second or 23.976 frames per second, the way NTSC actually does it, the best way to specify the proper fractional frame rate or decimal frame rate is to simply remember that you can use a fraction. And this is also what the standard actually does. So if you want 23.976 frames per second, you can enter that as 24,000 divided by 1,001 instead, and that will get you the correct frame rate. Of course, you can also just use 24, 30, and 60 frames per second as well and not worry about it. They will generally work pretty much everywhere. 
Okay, so now on to building the command. First, of course, we have to start with FFmpeg because that's always gotta be there to make any of this work. Next, we're gonna put the input parameter or, or the input frame rate. Now, I'm using the minus frame rate command. That's what specifies the frame rate. And then 24,000 divided by 1,001 because I want my video at 24 frame per second NTSC frame rate. Then we need to specify the files to read in. Now, this is an image sequence, and image uh, sequences are, are many files. It's not just one file, but we don't specify all of them here. We start with the minus i command, since this tells the FFmpeg that's the input file. Then we specify that FFmpeg should look for an image sequence with six zero padded digits. To do this, we set or we enter for the file name percent. 06d dot jpeg as the file name. Now, this sounds all kinds of weird, but it's actually pretty simple. The percent tells FFmpeg that it's looking for a pattern of numbers. The zero tells it that there are leading zeros, and the 6d tells it that there should be six digits in total in that file number sequence. Finally, the dot jpeg is the file extension for the files in question. Now, if they were PNGs, you would just use .png instead of .jpg. If they were DPX files, say that you get out of RAWs or raw video or something, then you would just use .dpx and so on. FFmpeg can also deal with a text part to the name. So if you took them directly from your camera, you might have a file that's named something like er5 underscore and a bunch of numbers .jpg or four numbers .jpg. In that case, you would use a pattern that matches that. So for the above example, we would use er5 underscore percent 04d.jpg as the input parameter, the thing that comes after the minus i and ffmpeg. Okay, so that takes care of the input section, and here's what we have so far. Now, the next section is filtering and processing. And there's only one filter that you might need to use, and that is going to be to rescale the values from full, which is what the image files are going to be saved in, to video levels for certain codecs and applications. Now, since we are going from a full range image to a video format and we're probably going to be maybe saving this as ProRes, uh, which uh, only uses or specifies limited range, we're going to include that here. So the next part is simply going to tell FFmpeg to convert the thing. And you can just copy this. The command is filter colon V, so it's a video filter. Scale equals in ra underscore range equals full colon out underscore range equals limited. Just tells FFmpeg to scale the colors from full range to limited range. And so far, our command is going to look like this. Finally, we get to the output section. And this is where we tell FFmpeg what we want the output, how we want the output compressed and what we want it to be saved as. And we'll start by telling FFmpeg what codec we want to use. And in this case, I'm gonna go with ProRes. And since I'm doing this on my MacBook Pro, I'm gonna use the hardware encoder as well. So I'm going to add codec uh, minus codec colon v prores underscore video toolbox to the end of the command. If you're following along on Windows or Linux, use minus codec colon v prores instead. Now next, I'm going to tell FFmpeg what type of ProRes profile I want it to use. In this case, I'm gonna go with ProRes LT, so why not? So I'm going to add to the command at the end, minus profile colon V space one. Now, finally, since ProRes LT is a 10-bit format with 422 chroma subsampling, we need to tell FFmpeg to convert the pixel data to that. So we finally add minus pix underscore FMT space YUV422P10LE. And finally, we are going to tell FFmpeg to save this file to timelapse.mov. And so in the end, our command looks like this, covering the input, the filtering, and the output options as a whole. Now, if we wanted to make this an HEV file in MP4 format instead, what would we do? Well, actually, we don't have to change all that much. The input section stays the same since we're still reading images. 
In an HEVC MP4 file, full range data is actually legal. So we can just get rid of the filter section. We don't need it at all, which just leaves the output section that we have to redo. So first, instead of using ProRes, we're going to tell the computer to use HEVC. So we're going to change the minus codec colon V entry to just libx265. Uh, this, of course, is the software encoder. If you're on a Mac, you could use the hardware encoder, HEVC underscore video toolbox. If you've got NVIDIA graphics cards, etc., there's stuff that you can use for the hardware on that as well. Next, we need to specify the quality we want. So we're going to add minus CRF space 15, because that's a good starting place. Finally, we have a choice. What chroma subsampling do we want to use? 422 will give us better quality, but bigger files. 420 is more widely supported for hardware decoding. So this will play back on a lot more devices without having to use as much power. Now, since I already showed a 422 pixel format option, I'm going to go with 420 chroma subsampling here so we can see something else. I'm also going to do this with 8-bit instead of 10-bit because, well, HEVC will let you do both, but we're going to just do 8 instead. So we are going to set the pixel output format using minus pix format, and we're going to just set this to YUV420. Now for eight, that also is going to give us eight bits and 420 chroma subsampling. Now, finally, the output file name is the last thing that we have, and we're going to just call this output.mp4. Hit return and let the computer do its thing, and you will get your processed file. So what else can FFmpeg do with your time lapse? Well, if there's motion, uh, motion interpolation can be used to add some motion blur. That said, in my experience, the results with this will vary wildly just on how much motion there is in your source video. And additionally, this process is really slow. Like, and when I say this, I'm talking like one frame per second or slower at full HD resolutions. That said, if you want to try it, the filter is, that you're looking for is called M Interpolate, and I've linked the documentation for it in the description. You can go ahead and play with it. You, for motion blur, you can also try the T-Mix filter, though like M Interpolate, you need to read the docs and experiment. Now, I'm not going to say you can't or shouldn't try either of these filters. Um, you absolutely should. Uh, but they're going to require a lot of experimentation on a case-by-case -case basis. In some videos, they'll work well. In other videos, they're not going to do very good at all. And that kind of experimentation is something that's I can't really cover in a video, and it's really best done with your own source material to see how it works. So with that, I'm going to wrap this one up here. Yes, FFmpeg is as complex as it is powerful, and I only scratched the surface here. However, I hope this gives you a glimpse of what it can do with basically no cost to yourself other than time. Now, if you found this useful or at least interesting, let me know by hitting that like button and sharing this. Of course, leave a comment as well if this is something that you find helpful or have a question. Now, if this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. Finally, if you'd like to directly support this video and future content like this, please consider hitting the thanks button if you can or buying yourself something you've always wanted from one of the affiliate links in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.